You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to review The Flash, finally back after another two week hiatus. And uh, it was an okay episode. I, I gotta say, this is probably my least favorite one this year so far. Um, and it wasn't even that it was bad, bad. Uh, just, there were some things about it that were really compelling. But the villain and some of the things involving her uh, weren't it, for me, personally. Uh, you know, the Bug-Eye Bandit makes her debut. Uh, obviously, going around, causing some issues. Getting revenge, getting vengeance for being terminated. And uh, that was fine. I mean, you know, it was, it was a villain of the week type deal. Whether or not we'll ever see Emily Kinney uh, play the Bug-Eye Bandit again remains to be seen. I'm sure we will. I'm, I'm just not a Kinney fan. I'm just not. As, <laughs> if you guys watch my Walking Dead reviews, uh, Beth doesn't do it for me. She just doesn't. Uh, so it's no different here. And I'm not going to sit here and say, well, she's on The Flash now, so she's great. No, 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 no. Let's just keep her, <laughs> let's keep her to a minimum on The Flash, please. Okay? All right. But there were a lot of other things going on that were really good. Uh, first of all, the Cisco thing was to me caught my big, caught my attention the most because when we first saw that he was having what looked like daydreams or flashbacks of some sort, um, I, I thought that was interesting. I, that's something I did not see coming, uh, and it it definitely added a different element, you know, because we know what happened. We know that that's a different timeline. He doesn't. He's having a revelation. He's having dreams, but he's actually dreaming or is having visions. Of something that did happen to him, just not in his current timeline. So, very, very interesting that they threw that in there, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm wondering how that's going to play out going forward. Uh, very interesting stuff. Didn't see that coming, so that definitely piqued my, piqued my interest, caught my attention. Uh, boy, Iris has got, is Iris not a bitch? Honestly, let's just keep it real. All right, I'm just tired of it. It's like, first of all. She's giving Eddie a hard time at, at dinner. You know, and if you got problems with your significant, uh, significant other, that's all fine and well. Just don't bring that shit to dinner. And don't bring it with, you know, and then she's just acting all bitchy. Then Barry gives her this great pep talk. Makes perfect sense. All right, fine. He's lying, but he's looking out for Eddie. And you think he gets through to Iris. And here she goes, shows up at his job, admits that Barry made sense and brought up some re relevant stuff. And she's still giving the guy a hard time. I mean, really? Really, can we just, I mean, she has completely just turned me off this character because you look back a couple of weeks ago and she's she's choach blocking uh, Barry when he's trying to date. Then, you know, it's like she doesn't want him, but no one else can have him. Now she's giving Eddie a hard time. It's like, really, man, just get over yourself. I I know there's Iris fans out there and, and that's all fine and well. I'm, she's just not doing it for me. She's not. Do, they're, they're doing everything in their power, I feel personally, to make her hateable because... You just, I was so turned off when she went to see Eddie at work and she treated him like that. It was just, I was like, oh, that's it. I'm done with her. You know what I mean? So we'll see how that plays out. And the, and the thing of it is, is you kind of, you kind of get that feeling now that it's going to cause a ripple between Barry and Eddie. Because quite honestly, she made it, she made it sound like Barry's, I mean, she, she told him she spoke to Barry and he might be thinking in his mind, well, if Barry would have said something good or if Barry would have, you know, tried to help me. Why would Iris still be pissed? So, you know, you, you kind of look at it from that perspective and it might cause an issue. Meanwhile, you know, Iris, she's just, ugh, ugh, ah. So, but, um, and of course, Harrison Wells was not as much the focus this week as he has been in recent weeks, but still very much in the fold. Obviously, Barry learned a lot, uh, a lot more of his backstory in terms of what happened 15 years ago and how he changed the moment his loved one died in that car accident, which we all saw what really happened there. So it makes perfect sense why he changed. And Barry's already pieced a lot of things together. He's just trying to gather as much information as possible. Um, I would have been nice to see him talk to Joe and figure out how they came to the agreement that they would inform Cisco and Caitlin. But I think you could assume that Barry said to Joe, hey, look, you're, you're right, you made a good point, but we also have to think of their safety. And I think maybe that's how they came to the conclusion of telling Cisco. The other thing I found weird too was Cisco. I mean, you know, he obviously was very much out of sorts this week. Uh, you know, from from making a mistake. Obviously, his visions and his dreams were really bothering him. In fact, it got to a point where I started to think to myself, "Wait, is Cisco turning bad, or is he under the influence of something?" Uh, it, it, to me, for a second there, it looked that way. But when we got to the end and we see what we what he did for Ray, and he revealed to them about his dreams and his daydreams. Uh, obviously those visions were really, really troubling him to the point where he wasn't focusing. So, uh, and we know that Barry, uh, excuse me, we know that Cisco and 
Wells have a bond, despite the fact that Wells isn't really Wells, but there was a bond there. They did work together. I'm sure that uh, Thorne at some point had to try and live a normal life. You know, uh, yes, he has a plan, but it's a, a long plan. It takes time to hatch. Uh, you know, he, um, he's developed relationships. And he even said in the, uh, the episode where before they went back in time, he even told Cisco, you've been like a son to me. But, you know, he's got a goal. He's got an end game. And that end game does not include his relationships with anybody. Just, and, you know, the Bug Eye Bandit thing was, it was cool. I mean, the Bees thing, that was cool. Um, Little Girl Tusk with the whole Bees thing. That I'm, I'm, I'm with Cisco. I'm not a big bee person. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't, I've been stung twice. It's not, it's not fun. And I'm mildly allergic to them. But, uh, so that was cool. The little robot thing. Um, in terms of Palmer and Felicity being there, that was okay. In fact, we kind of got to see Palmer do more work as Adam in this Flash episode than we've seen him do anything on Arrow. So at least they, and you know what? He seems to fit more in the Flash to me. Like it, it, it wasn't a bad thing that he was there. I mean, we know why they did it, obviously plot point stuff like that. But when I was watching him interact and do his thing, I gotta be honest, he looks like, or he just come to me, feels like he makes more sense on the Flash than he does on Arrow. So, uh, but he's on Arrow, so that's that, you know, and he's obviously gonna have his own show at some point along with a couple of other characters from both shows. We all know this, the crossover show. So, and I think maybe that's where he'll flesh out and really stand out. He just doesn't seem to fit Arrow all the time. And when he was on The Flash today, he seemed to me to fit more. Uh, and it's always cool seeing Felicity go there because, you know, Felicity and Barry are pretty close. They have a history. Obviously, Felicity has a great relationship with Cisco and Caitlin. And uh, so that, you know, it's cool. I like when they cross it over and little stuff like that. We're going to be seeing more of that going forward. Obviously, a lot of big things are happening on both shows with Oliver and the whole Ra's al Ghul thing and the League of Assassins, as well as Barry on his side with the reverse Flash and uh, other things like that coming into the fold. So, but overall, this episode was okay. It was good. I was more interested in the stuff happening outside of the Bug-Eye Bandit. That didn't really interest me too much. Um, you know, to me, it, I just kind of took it as a, you know, crime of the week, you know, villain of the week type deal, while they still try to just kind of drop some more plot elements. Felt a little bit like filler. Uh, wasn't, again... As much as I love this show, and as as and it has been great, you know, it's not perfect. And to me, this episode was just okay. It was it was good. I, there were certain things about it I really liked. The Cisco thing was great. Felicity and Adam being on the show was good. Uh, Bug Eye Bandit, I was all right. You know, they, they didn't even really show her that much anyway, which I think might have been a smart move. Um, the little bees, metal bees, that was cool, cool tech stuff like that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the end game. You know, when, when they drop trailer after trailer of what's going to happen, and then you get an episode like this, it's kind of a little bit of a downer. So maybe if I were to watch it again sometime down the road, like when I buy the Blu-ray, maybe I'll appreciate it more. But as for right now, it was just okay for me. It was, it was just okay, dog. It was just okay. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's it for this review. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe. Join the nation's Facebook page to meet other subscribers or visit ETN's Facebook page and Twitter page. Links for all are in the description. You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to review The Flash, finally back after another two week hiatus. And uh, it was an okay episode. I, I gotta say, this is probably my least favorite one this year so far. Um, and it wasn't even that it was bad, bad. Uh, just, there were some things about it that were really compelling. But the villain and some of the things involving her uh, weren't it, for me, personally. Uh, you know, the Bug-Eye Bandit makes her debut. Uh, obviously, going around, causing some issues. Getting revenge, getting vengeance for being terminated. And uh, that was fine. I mean, you know, it was it was a villain of the week type deal. Whether or not we'll ever see Emily Kinney uh, play the Bug Eye Bandit again remains to be seen. I'm sure we will. I'm I'm just not a Kinney fan. I'm just not. As <laughs> if you guys watch my Walking Dead reviews, uh, Beth doesn't do it for me. She just doesn't. Uh, so it's no different here. And I'm not gonna sit here and say, well, she's on the Flash now, so she's great. No, 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 no. no. Let's just keep her. <laughs> let's keep her to a minimum on the Flash. Please. Okay. All right. But there were a lot.